Hi, welcome to Code Conversations. Today we're talking to Mads Torgerson. So what are you going to show us today, Mads? Hey, uh, we just shipped uh, C-Sharp 7.0, and I wanted to just uh, give you a quick look at some of the features that are in there. Great. All right, let's get started. OK, cool. Um, so here I have a completely empty program, and I'm going to show you a super realistic scenario from, from the real world, which is about computing Fibonacci numbers. Oh, I do that all the time. Uh, right, yeah. <laughs> Who hasn't? Um, and so it's just a good vehicle for showing some sure, of these features. Sure, right. sure. Um, C Sharp 7 has a bunch of features that kind of go into the, the small of your programming. They deal with how your data flows and how your code flows and kind of cleans it up in sort of the uh, programming in the small kind of way, if you will. Okay. Um, so let's start out with um, computing some Fibonacci. So Fibonacci is, as you know, uh, it's a function that takes this, it's a, a sequence of numbers. So we're going to, if I can spell Fibonacci here. Um, you know, the nth Fibonacci number is computed by being, it's the sum of the two previous ones. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's easy. Um, but to do that efficiently, you don't want to call recursively twice, and so you want to have a helper function that gives you the two previous ones. Right, okay. okay? So let's write that helper function um, and talk about what it should return. I'm just going to put int there for now, but let's say that we have this helper function. That's supposed to return the last two Fibonacci numbers, in the ith and the ith minus one. Okay. Well, I minus one, however you say so, that. So far, this is all like old school C sharp stuff. Nothing so far, but now it's going to change, right? right. Because um, I don't, want, I can't just return an int. I need to return two ints. Right. Okay. So in the past, I would do return an array or create a, a type and return that or a struct or whatever, right? Yeah. So or you'd have out parameters yeah. or something like that. Yeah. So we just wanted to make it really easy to return multiple results, and so now we have tuples in C sharp that look like this. Hooray. And you know, they can be different types, but here they're two hints. Mm -hmm. um, so this is just, this thing here is just a type that means I have two hints for you, and they're in, in a sequence, in order. Right. right. I can also make it a little nicer. I can give them names, but that's optional. So I could call this one current, and this one uh, prev, for just for this, the mm -hmm. ith, and this is the ith minus one. So you can put names on, and that, that um, makes them nicer to use. Um, so that's a tuple type right there. And so if we deal with the base case of the, um, of the recursion here, if it's zero, uh, return uh, one comma zero is the first tuple that I want to return. So that um, is a tuple literal. That's great. OK. So yeah. just uh, super nice uh, support there. It, it, it does rely on a new underlying type called value tuple. Okay. Um, that will be in future frameworks, but um, if you're not targeting one of those yet, um, we can. Um, if there's a new Git package, you can go and get. Okay. And then all it's right. it's all supported. Okay. So um, so let's um, let's implement this uh, function. Um, we have um, um, so that was the base case. So if we're not in the base case, we're going to ignore negative numbers. Mm -hmm. You uh, exercise for the reader. <laughs> uh, all right. Okay. But let's uh, let's say otherwise. Let's get the result of the previous. Fibonacci, so var t for tuple equals fib of i minus 1. And we can see what that looks like. Um, and it looks like we t here, you can see it's a tuple. It has a current and prev. Let's return a new tuple consisting of t's current, like the previous current, uh -huh. add it with the previous previous. Uh, that's a new Fibonacci number. And then the current one from before is you now going to be the previous one, so that's in the second position. Right. Here. Okay. And if I get confused by this, I can actually use um, I can use names in here as well. Uh, um, yeah. Okay. In a syntax that's similar to named arguments, I can say current priv here, and just to um, to mm -hmm. emphasize what I'm doing here, because otherwise it might get a little confusing. So the the nice thing there, it's less code, but it's still and arguably more readable than some of the other things I would have done to package those numbers yeah. up. Yeah. Okay. And you see how the nice names came in handy here. I can use them to dot in. Otherwise, there's a default name, mm -hmm. item one and item two I can use. OK. Right? And so if you want to implement uh, the Fibonacci method itself here, I can return a call to f my helper method with n, and then just dot and get the current one here, and I'm done. Wow. OK. So that's one way to consume, uh, uh, to produce and consume tuples. Mm -hmm. um, there's also support for what we call deconstruction, what's called deconstruction. And that means right here, for instance, where I'm grabbing a tuple and then dotting into it later, instead of having that temporary tuple value, I can actually split the tuple I get back from fib mm -hmm. um, directly into its components. So if instead of saying var t here, I say var uh, c comma p for current and prev, uh, I'm now creating two new variables 
and making them the values that were in the tuple that I got back from fib. Ah, OK. OK? And so here, instead, I could say, um, I would say C plus v, uh, P here, just using the, the variables I got from before, um, and C here. Um, and that's, in many ways, a nicer, a nicer way to mm -hmm. um, consume a tuple. It depends on the situation. Right? I, can also, I could also do it down here. It, it, this is actually a pretty nice implementation. Just for, for sake of illustration, you know, let's pull this call out to a temporary using one of the nice new refactorings. Let's introduce a local, um, call it R. But, in, but then let's, let's actually deconstruct here and say we want um, the first component to be the result we're going to return. And mm -hmm. the second component we actually don't care about. And we can use this new thing called a discard. Yeah. So if you use an underbar as a variable and it's not declared anywhere, you could, that just means discard the value. Okay. And now we just return the R that was the thing that we, the first component of the tool. If you nice. Okay. okay. So that's deconstruction. You can also declare, actually, if you declare a deconstructor method on your own types, they can be deconstructed too. It's not just tuples. That can oh, okay. Be. I'm not going to show you that here. Um, so, so on from that, uh, one thing to notice here is that this fib method is completely just a helper method of the Fibonacci. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, and nobody else should use it. And so it really should, it really belongs inside of the Fibonacci method, if you will. Right. right. And so um, I can actually now take it and move it into the Fibonacci method. Let's move it to the end and here. And what keys are you holding to do that? Just oh, so that's people? Alt and Up and Down. Okay, that actually great. lets you move a piece of code uh, through other code. Okay. I, I love that one for demos. <laughs> um, and I actually use it in, in coding as well. Okay, so I can do this, um, put it in here and put a, a line. And you the only thing you see here is that uh, static is underlined. But if I delete that, because you can't mm -hmm. put a static modifier in here, I now have a, a method defined inside of another method. And that's totally fine. Right? That makes it very clear that this is only intended for use inside of the Fibonacci method. Does the position inside the Fibonacci method matter? Could you put it above, below? It doesn't matter. Yeah, I could put it anywhere I like. Okay. It doesn't matter much. The only thing is that. Um, because it's inside, it can actually, just like a lambda, it can actually reference things that are in scope from the outer method. Right? Uh -huh. If I wanted to, I could take the, the end parameter up here from the outer method, I could use it inside of the inner method. Uh, and, right. and so you still have to follow the rule that you can't reference a local before it's declared. Right. So, the, so if I, in this case, it's not a problem. But if, if I used uh, R from up here and I moved the method above the declaration of R, that wouldn't be allowed. Right. But okay. other than that, you can put them anywhere. You can see even though fib is declared after I call it, that's not a problem. OK. So um, all is good there. Wow. Um, actually, if I use R, you can see that I do get an error um, because I'm calling the method before a variable that it uses has been, declared, has been right. assigned okay. in the outer one. So it's actually being pretty smart about it. Let's change this back to C so it actually implements Fibonacci. That's local functions. Wow, OK. OK. Um, so now it gets a little, um, uh, let's say, a little far-fetched here. But let's okay. say that I want to change my Fibonacci method to a try Fibonacci, where um, I'm getting um, any old object as input rather than an int. Right? Okay. So I get object O instead. And okay. that might fail, because that might not be, a, be a an integer in any, right. in any way. So what I'm going to do instead is follow the try pattern. I'm going to return, oh, not true. I'm going <laughs> to, I wish. I'm going to return a bool. And then I'm going to have an out parameter, uh, like in the old days, for the actual result. Okay. Out int r for result here. OK, so we have to change the method a little bit. Now there's already an, so let's say we already succeed and we found an n. We, we now already have an R variable that we can just assign in the deconstruction here. Mm -hmm. And then we return true, uh, assuming that we succeeded. But we haven't succeeded yet. So let's go and, let's go and see if, we can, if there is a number n that we can take the Fibonacci on here. And that's where we introduce the notion of pattern matching. So what okay. I'm going to do here is to say, uh, this object, if it's, you can already do this in C sharp, if it's an int, you know, we're in business. Mm -hmm. But now, uh, previously in C sharp, you have now lost the value as an int, and you kind of have to go figure, grab it all over again. Right. But right. now you can add a little n here, um, a variable name to your is uh, expression, and that actually captures that int that you found out that it was. Ah, uh, nice. Okay. Okay. And uh, it's not just a little extension of the is expression itself. The thing here in the is expression is now an example of a pattern, 
A pattern is this new thing that we allow in C Sharp, um, known from functional languages, for instance, mm -hmm. that it's sort of a thing that represents a test and an extraction of data at the same time. So okay. this, this is a, an example of a type pattern that tests whether the thing is an int and extracts the int value, if you will. Okay, there are other the kinds of time. patterns, yeah. both some that we have in C Sharp now and some that we plan to add in the future. Okay. And patterns can also be used in switch statements, by the way. And so you greatly enhance the expressiveness of switch statements. You come in with this object, and you, and you have a case that says, is it an int? If so, call it n and, and go through this case. Right, OK. So instead of just matching constants in, in a switch uh, statement, you can now do much, much more. You can do something with them. Yeah. Okay. But so for now, let's just do this. Uh, let's put curlies around so we ca capture the whole two statement thing there. and. Um, and now we, we declared n inside of the is expression, and we can use it in here. And n is just like any old variable. Uh, it's just declared inside of an expression. So we could actually use it and assign to it if we wanted to. Let's, let's make this a little more fun. And let's say, hey, if it's a string, if o is string s, um, and we can parse that string as an int, let's ah. also, let, then we're also good, right? Okay. okay so let's say int dot try parse um, of that string. And it needs an out parameter, because this is, again, the try pattern. Uh -huh. And we have the n over here. That's yeah. the integer that we want. So we can just pass you n as an out parameter, get it assigned to uh, by the try parse. And now, uh, e either way, we obtained an integer that we are now right. passing to if the e if either, OK. I see what you're So that's a little, it's a little tricky there. But yeah. it, it's, uh, it, it just shows how it all just uh, clicks together nicely. So, so there's your FIP method with some pattern matching in it. Uh, it's, it's a little annoyed that we're not returning on all paths. So let's add some yeah. default behavior. Uh, the result is a 0, and we return a false. And then it, that should shut it up. Wow. So that's most of it. I, I want to show one more thing. So now we're starting to introduce variables in the middle of expressions. Mm -hmm. And we figured, let's do that in a couple of places. Um, we also sort of do it with, uh, with the deconstruction here. But let's, um, let's go and call our try Fibonacci. And let's call it with a string, just because we just implemented that. So let's, let's take a string containing 11 here. Mm -hmm. And then we want, uh, then again, it's an out parameter. Mm -hmm. Annoying today, whenever you have to pass an out parameter, there has to be an existing variable that you, pa that you pass. Otherwise, you have to go declare it. Right, right. Um, but now we're like, OK, now we know how to declare variables in the middle of an expression. Uh, let's so use that here yeah. as well. So now we, in, for out parameters, we let you declare a variable here. Let's call it r for result. So, so the variable is declared right here, where the out parameter is passed, um, and then gets assigned you know, by, the, by the callee. And because it's passed as a parameter, it actually even knows what type it's supposed to be. You can see from the method signature, so we can just put var here. Oh, And right. so if it's a long type name, not only do you avoid having to have a separate, name where you a separate line where you declare it, but you also avoid typing out the long name, because you can now just pick up the type from the out call that you were meaning to, to do all along. Right, so now we can just right line it out. And um, hopefully, if I did everything correctly, if we press Control F5 here, uh, it builds. And it, there wow. you go, it, pr it uh, produces the Fibonacci of 11. So OK, um, apparently it worked. Wow, that's great. OK, so we'll, we'll have this code available in, in the um, show notes for, for people to look at. Yeah. And uh, so my only recommendation for the next C Sharp version is to actually just have a Fibonacci native uh, right. language feature. And I think then right. that We're a little remiss there. <laughs> but um, we'll start with Fibonacci, and uh, you will, you know, we'll just go through all the famous uh, awesome. uh, number sequences. OK, all right. Well, thanks cool. a lot. Thank you.